So with all this knife and gun crime on the street, I was introduced to this charity by Conscious Links, who is an umbrella company that works to help bring these organizations together. And this is first a training because for me, it's all about understanding how you save a life on the streets. And with so much more knife and gun crime happening on the streets, I think more people should understand how to save a life if they come across a victim on the street. So it's really, really important for parents, carers, youth organizations, I'm always saying, to be skilled up on how to save a life on the street. So I've come across to this place here. Let's go and see how they save lives. In 2018 alone, there were over 40,000 recorded incidents involving a sharp object. Stabbings have increased and that's why it's important if you're a first responder, if you're first on the scene, you know what to do to save a life. So Michael, what do you think about the current um, rise in knife and gun crime on the street? Being a first aider, training people how to save lives, what do you think about the trend at the moment? I think it's terrible. I just can't see how anyone would want to end the life of another human being. Mm. I just think we need to learn to communicate better and just work together more. I think it's down to the community mm. to take charge and I think it's time for community leaders and for our politicians to actually act now and stop this. Tell me a bit about the work you do here. Um, well, we're a training company. We run courses for businesses all over the country, but we also have our own charity called Free Family First Aid, where we run two-hour courses in the evening for yeah, teaching yeah. people about essential life-saving skills. We're also going out into the community, yeah. into churches, clubs, community associations and running short two-hour yeah. courses for them to teach them the essential life-saving skills. I really think that the work you, you do needs to be more out in the public because people need to know what to do um, because we're getting more and more people who attend um, where somebody's been stabbed before the police and before the ambulance services. Yeah. And I think it's really important because time is so critical at that particular point. So I think it's important that people are versed on what to do if they're the first on the scene and also friends you know because sometimes friends are together and somebody gets stabbed and friends don't know what to do you did tell me something that was really really interesting about um, carrying something with you okay when someone has been stabbed the first thing we tend to do is freeze and think what to do you have to remember seconds count if someone has been stabbed maybe a pair of scissors a screwdriver we have to make sure the area is safe and we're not going to kneel on anything and then we have to call an ambulance. It's essential to stop the bleeding. Now if you're in a street and outdoor situation you're not going to have a first aid kit with you. If you're in a club the security will have first aid training and kits available but let's say you're outside in the street. You may have a few simple things you can use like towels, tea towels, a sleeve and maybe something to protect yourself, like a carrier bag. So, using a carrier bag and picking up a tea towel, straight onto the wound, direct pressure. Squeeze as tight as you can and wait for the ambulance. The essential thing is to control the bleeding. Wow, you see, I didn't know that as well. And that part about protecting yourself from the blood, yes. it's, a very, it's key, isn't it? Because a lot of people don't get involved because they think about that blood. Yes. And so that, basic skill there of carrying a bag, reversing the bag, put your hand inside the bag and then apply the pressure to the wound is very, very important. I'm sure a lot of people don't know that. Um, so in terms of turning up somewhere and then there's a victim on the floor and they have a stab wound to the chest, what's your, what's your advice on that? Because we're seeing so many stab wounds to the chest. If the patient's been stabbed in the chest, one of the risks is bleeding into the yeah. chest cavity. Now. We breathe easier in a sitting up position. If you think about it, if you've ever visited an elderly yeah. relative in hospital and they're yeah. on oxygen, they're always sitting they're always up. Sitting up. Yeah. So yeah. sit the patient upright and try and lean them towards the injured side. So if there is any blood in the chest area, let's yeah. try and keep it in one lung rather than the other lung. So if the patient's been stabbed on the left side, sit them upright, leaning to the left and just stay okay. with them until the ambulance turns up. Yeah, a lot of this I didn't know. If I saw a victim on the floor, I would probably just run over and try and keep them flat on the floor. 
And so now I know it's, it's probably best to lift them up if it's a chest wound. <coughs> if they're but, still conscious, yeah. yes. So if it's um, a, a wound to the leg, because I know some, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of the wounding is to the legs and the, and the buttocks, and those are very vital places to be stabbed in as well. Yeah. So if it's, to, if it's something around that area, you would just apply that pressure Direct pressure as you did that. before. Well, some of these stabbings to legs are meant to wound, not to kill. They still can they still kill. kill. You have major arteries in the legs. Yeah. And direct pressure can help save a life. The onus is on us, as the public, to learn how to save a life.